The Los Angeles Lakers announced a major front office shakeup yesterday. Magic Johnson will be the team's new president of basketball operations. General manager Mitch Kupchak and VP of basketball operations Jim Buss both were relieved of their duties. And the first trade for Magic as he took over, he moved Lou Williams to the Houston Rockets for Corey Brewer and a first-round draft pick. In baseball news, the Washington Nationals reached an agreement with former Baltimore Orioles catcher Matt Wieters. The deal is for two years and $21 million. Wieters has an opt-out clause after the first season. And in hope of improving pace of play, Major League Baseball has approved a change to the intentional walk rule, going from the traditional four-pitch walk to a dugout signal. The intentional walk rule will go into effect this upcoming season. The Honda Classic brings the world's best PGA Tour players to Palm Beach County, and the opening round kicks off tomorrow. 640 Fox Sports South Florida. No? Not the, not the best? Some of the best? <laughs> 640 Fox Sports South Florida is your home for Florida Panther hockey. Tonight, the Cats welcome in the Edmonton Oilers. Puck drop from the bb and Center is scheduled for 730. For all the latest in sports news, log on to FoxSports640.com. I'm Steve Zemack. So if you get a chance either today, tomorrow, or sometime before the weekend, please head over to our favorite dealership, Brayman Honda of the Palm Beaches at 5200 Lake Worth Road in Green Acres, and take advantage of the unbelievable savings that are happening right now. If you have been thinking about getting a new car, if you have even entertained the idea that maybe over the next week or so you would go shopping for it, let me just save you the time and effort and go save thousands on the over 11 acres of Hondas that are available right now. Not to mention the true zero leasing. Zero down, zero security deposit, and zero due its signing. You can drive a new Honda from as little as one ninety nine a month. That's right. One ninety nine a month with nothing due at signing. General Manager Mike Rodriguez and his fantastic team at Bremen Honda, they are dedicated to offering you the best car buying experience. I should know over the last five years, it's the only place I have gotten my vehicles. That's where my parents go. It's where my sister goes. That's where all my friends go. Get to Bremen Honda today and take advantage of True Zero leasing and unbelievable savings happening right now. 5200 Lake Worth Road in Green Acres or shop them online today at BremenHondaPB.com.
So the uh, the hunt is on for one particular article, uh, article of clothing, and uh, it just won't stop. It absolutely won't stop. Uh, the cops are not going to slow down until they figure out exactly uh, what happened to this uh, article of clothing. We'll get to that here in just a minute. Welcome in. Renary and ZMAX 640, Fox Sports, South Florida. Join the fun. We invite you to check out our live television broadcast via Facebook Live. All good stuff there. Got all sorts of cameras and technology working here. It's all good times. Nice look. Fox Sports 640 is how you uh, reach us on Facebook. Just like the page and come and hang out with us because we're pretty cool. We have good times like that. Good times. Uh, before we get to the uh, the missing article of clothing, this is like the the missing white suit or the missing dress. Uh, it's it's a ra- it's just unbelievable to me. I, I got to talk to you about what's happened so far in spring training because there's a couple of things that always signal the start of spring training and the baseball season. And we usually we usually get asked that, Zmac a lot. Like, people will be like, you know, having to deal with all the sports and everything. Like, how do you... How do you know when baseball starts and hockey ends and all? Like, how do you put it all together? And the answer is is pretty simple. I know when baseball starts, um, the minute I read a headline about Goose Gossage saying some sort of obscure, out of control, get off my lawn, I'm an old geezer comment. And that's how I know baseball has started. And yes, he has given us the start, the official start of Major League Baseball season. Thanks, Goose. This guy, he just loves to be in the headlines. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah, baseball does ne- it, it never fully starts until good old Goose has some sort of unbelievable, unpopular opinion about somebody or something to do with the game of baseball. And last year, it was Jose Batista. Remember last year how yep. we had to discuss Jose Batista? A bat flip. The bat flip. Disrespecting and, baseball. Oh, he, and he just he ripped off just this this diatribe of how everything is a disgrace to the game, and he's a disgrace, and Dominican re, uh, players are a disgrace. Like, the whole nine. And we all just chalked it off to Goose is like, it's just an old, cranky dude with a, you know, handlebar mustache that just can't get over it. Well, this year, he commi- uh, he committed just over-the-top blasphemy, especially the Yankee fans. Yeah, this is... It's one yeah, thing to make fun of Jose Batista, a Toronto Blue Jay. Like, you can do that all you want. It is a whole nother animal, a whole nother animal, Goose, to sit there and rip Mariano Rivera, which is what he tried unsuccessfully to do this year. And for no reason, mind you. It's not as if Mariano Rivera has come up in, or something is happening with Rivera. No, they just stuck a mic in his face yeah. and he started blabbing. He just felt like going on, eh, eh, my day, eh, I used to have teeth. Eh, eh. Let me tell you something. He went on the let me tell you something rant. And in that rant, he began to tell us that these guys that pitch one inning with the three-run lead and get a save, it shouldn't even be a save for one inning and a three-run lead. Now, this is not a knock against Mo. I'm just trying to make a point that I'd like to know how many of Mo's saves are of the one inning and three-run lead type. If everybody in the blank and bullpen can't save a three-run lead for one inning, they shouldn't be in the big leagues. I'd like to know what percentage of most 650 saves, it's actually 652, but, you know, don't let the facts get in the way of a good rant. He'd like to know how many of those he's got in one inning. I'll bet it's over 20%. Look it up. He said we're workhorses. Starters still prided themselves in finishing what they started, and when they got in trouble, that's when we came into the game. I'd like to know how many of my saves, how many inherited runners I came in versus Mo, and how many inherited runners did he come in with? And he kept saying, my point is not to knock uh, Mo, 
which is exactly what he's doing. But he thinks he could be utilized more efficiently and more beneficial to a team by bringing him into games earlier. Now, there's an argument to be made, but the position, the closer position, right, turned into Mr. Ninth Inning. Yeah. Closing the game out. Mariano averaged 78 innings a season. Yep. That's still pretty hefty. Well, he also uh, played in a different era. Yeah, and completely a different. Different time. And when he was asked his thoughts about people calling Rivera the all-time saves leader and the greatest reliever of all time, um, Goose Gossage said that's a complete uh, BS. Do what I did, and we'll compare apples to apples, or Bruce Souter, or Rolly Fingers. Here we go. Here's the whole get off my lawn back in my day. Rolly fan. Yeah. yeah. Well, Those just... guys set the bar. I'll tell you what. Set up guys have a harder role today than closers today. Uh, yeah, come on. He was also asked, does he like the idea of the reliever award being renamed after Rivera? Nope. He said, if I had only pitched one inning my entire career, I'd still be pitching at 65. And I love the fact that he kept reiterating, this is not a knock on Mo. Of course not. Doesn't sound like one at all. Yeah, because we all know that any time, any time somebody starts off with the, with all due respect, they are about to disrespect you on a level you've never heard. With all due respect, you're a douchebag. <laughs> oh, okay. I can't. I don't know why you would have to preface it like that. If you, you just look at Goose's, you just ripped the guy's entire legacy as one of, as the greatest closer of all time. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at Goose's innings pitched with the Yankees outside of one season where he pitched 134 innings, yes, he's hovering right around the average of what Mariano had. Some if even you compare below. the two? Yeah, if you compare them? Yeah. Yeah. 58, 99, 46, 87, 79. Moe's average was 78, career. Yeah. Well, no offense. <laughs> but the next thing that's going to come out of my mouth is going to be offensive. <laughs> this is exactly who Goose Gossage is here. It's exactly what he is doing. And and listen, I respect Goose. I grew up watching Goose Gossage, and there was nobody more feared when he came into a game than Goose Gossage. Him and Ron Davis had this thing going back and forth uh, when they played for the Yankees, and and Ron Davis played for the Twins before he came to the Yankees, and he was a dominant closer there. But they had this thing going, Souter, Raleigh Fingers. It was a different time. They thought of nothing of coming in the seventh inning and getting a – a nine-out save. They, that's just what they did. It was a different game, though. It was a different era. Everything was different. You had guys that were pitching. 300 innings was yeah. 290 innings. 300 innings were a norm. You get guys that play an entire season, go through the playoffs, and they're lucky if they get 200, lucky. 220. And not even that, they get pulled back, so yes. they don't touch 200. Now, I will give him one thing, though. The whole you come into a game. And you have a three-run lead, and you pitch one inning, and you get a save. Eh. Or, or even better, one out, yeah. and you get a save. Yeah. He's right. If you can't protect a three-run lead, and you only have to get three outs to do it, uh, you really shouldn't be in the pros. Just saying. I do also agree that I think right now, the setup guys, a lot of times, have a awful lot. It's a much harder role right now than the closer. Well, I think that's part of the reason you saw the Indians move Andrew Miller, Francona, move Miller into the middle innings of a game. Yeah. So he could secure whatever it was, five, six, seven, and then you get maybe another run or two on the board. Yeah, but you don't. The ninth inning looks better. You can't hold. You want to talk statistics with Rivera? Are you going to hold the idea? There was, was there any question in your mind if you had a one run lead? With Rivera on the mound, that the game was over? Was there any question in anybody's mind? Now, granted, he's not perfect. Nobody is. But for that stretch of Mariano Rivera, if you felt anything but 100% confidence with Rivera on the mound with a one-run lead, I don't know. It's what, what were you watching? 
And 19 seasons he did it for. Yeah, and the idea that somehow Mo isn't the greatest reliever of all time because he just pitched one inning at a time is the stupidest take I've ever heard in my life. It's also one of those, get off my lawn! It's it's usually always by an old-timer. In my day, this is how we used to do it. Come on. He's the all-time saves leader. He dominated as a closer for, what, two decades in the American League East of all places? And he dominated through the steroid era, and the dude was a buck 80 soaking wet with one pitch. Yeah. He had one Solid pitch. Point. His ERA was always hovering right below two. And he did it in the biggest market in the planet on the most well-known team on the planet. And how many championships? On the biggest moments and biggest stages ever in the game. And he did it in the postseason. Come on, stop it. The fact I even got to argue this, Goose, is ridiculous. Every unit of measurement, I don't care what you want to do. Every unit of measurement, as far as I'm concerned, tells me that R- Rivera was a one of those Haley's Comets. We talk about them. Guys that only come along once every 76 years. So what, Goose was a three-inning guy, and he's saying Mariano's well, just a one-inning in guy? he was that era of Suter yeah. and, and Finger. Quisenberry was another guy. Um uh, they all did that. If they had to come in and get six outs, five outs, seven outs, they were there. They, they'd come in. But wow. to his point, there were a lot of times where you didn't have to come in because you're right. The starter went eight innings, nine innings. Didn't matter. He, he, starters, you almost had to pull them out of the game on purpose because they're like, you ain't bringing this. I ain't giving it to the bullpen. Screw you guys. And Gossage was one of the most dominant relievers of all time. I, I give it. I'm not taking anything away no, from I mean, him. You could count on him for three innings, but but now you're becoming more known for that cranky old guy that's just throwing rocks at the teenagers because they're playing that damn music too loud. Well, and then he and he also went on a rant about money, and he was only getting paid twelve thousand dollars his second year in the league, or he was just. Listen, do not. They put a mic in front, and yes. he just complained. And he's fun, and I get it, but, uh, you know, don't go after Mo. About. I don't go after Mo. You want to go after Batista, be my guest. He wasn't a Yankee. You want to go against anybody else. Goose, you can Fair. rant all day long about everybody and anybody else. Do not be blasphemous and talk about former great Yankees that way. Don't do it. I'm surprised he's, <laughs> he gets invited back after comments like this. I just... <sighs> I mean, of all the dudes, really? You want to talk about Dave LaRoche? All right, be be good. You don't talk about Rivera. Don't do it, man. You want to talk about even talk about anybody else but Rivera? Who was that uh, lunatic there before R- Rivera was the setup? Wetland? You want to talk about John Wetland? Be my guess. He wasn't really a Yankee except for that one year anyway. He was a few fries short of a happy meal. Be my guess, but do not, do not pick a fight with Mariano Rivera. I mean, that's absurd. It's always good to hear Goose Gossage, though. And his defense, he was a workhorse. I do kind of, listen, I I think the statistics for a lot of guys get very skewed, you know, skewed from that one inning and you got a a three-run lead, really, and you get a save. That's kind of ridiculous. But it's, again, it's not Rivera's fault, and it's nobody else's fault in this generation that that's how it's set up right now. Even worse, you have a four-run lead, and there's a runner on second, and they bring you in for the final out. You get the save. Yes. It's not his fault. I mean, you still got to, so what, 652? You still got to get it done. And the fact that he did it. And and to your point, in the American League East. East. Yeah. On the biggest stage, in the biggest market, on the most coveted, and well-known team in the history of the game. And he still did it. The fact that he barely spoke English probably helped him there. Just saying. People still can't touch uh, Mariano's cutter. And he did it with one pitch. The cutter. And and he could have continued to yes. do it. Now, having said that, it's one thing to be 65 years of age and be the cranky old guy in the room when you were great. It's a whole nother thing to be a 50-year-old president of the Yankees and to call out your current star setup man in Dylan Batantes. Randy Levine, what in the hell were you thinking here? 
Did you see this? And <laughs> I didn't get a chance to talk about this uh, yesterday, but this happened over the weekend and thoroughly pissed me off to no end. And Batanzas is a guy that needs support mentally. I mean, we saw him going to slumps at times last year. He obviously is not, he's not going to be the closer. We get it because he really didn't fit that bill. But, but his numbers are this guy's quote numbers. For those of you that don't know what happened, Dylan Batantes took the Yankees to arbitration. He wanted $5 million. The Yankees were offering three. The arbitrator uh, sided with the Yankees and gave him $3 million. But that wasn't good enough for Randy Levine. Randy Levine went on this tirade on Twitter, just blasting the guy. He wanted three. His, his salary in 2017 will be $3 million. He had filed $5 million. Randy Levine says that's a half-baked attempt to use a player to change a well-established market. That's almost a steal. He said that $3 million should be a great victory for Dylan Batantes and his $5 million that had no bearings in reality whatsoever. He said that $5 million, uh, that $5 million request might as well have been $50 million. He doesn't have the stats. He said $5 million goes to elite closers, pitchers who pitch the ninth inning and have a lot of saves. Dylan didn't have that record. He wait, never wait, wait. did. Elite closers make 13, 12, 11 million a year. I mean, Craig Krimble, uh, K- Kimbrell's making 13 million. Zach Britton's making 12 million. Oh, for his uh, time in the end, in the, uh, comparing apples to apples as far as service. Ken Grimble's been in it a lot longer than Dylan Batantis. Okay, so Araldis Chapman's making 21 million. Well, he also, and, and just to finish the ripping of Dylan Batantes' own setup man here, which. He ended up winning the arbitration. He goes to say, it's like me saying, I'm not the president of the Yankees. I'm an astronaut. I'm not an astronaut, and Dylan Patantes is not a closer. That's what wow. Randy Levine, the the president Shut him down. of the Yankees, had to say. I don't know if he was drunk. I don't know what he was doing. But what the hell are you doing? I'll take Dylan Patantes for $5 million a year. And I'm sure many other teams around the league would. Well, it also just, uh, this whole thing blows my mind. Every one of his arguments was ridiculous. And quite honestly, I think this is one of the reasons why you should avoid ever going to arbitration with one of your own players. Like, you can't be that far apart where you can't come up with some sort of agreement to get in the middle and everybody wins. But this idea that you have to get paid appropriately as a reliever is absurd. It's completely absurd. Andrew Miller is not the Indians' closer. Is he not worth $9 million a year? I mean, he's not the closer. He's underpaid. Yeah. Neither is Darren O'Day in, in Baltimore. He's also underpaid. Yeah. And same thing for Dylan Patantes. You're going to try to tell me that $5 million plus only goes to elite closers? What? Huh? You just paid Chapman $86 million over five years. You want to talk about a dude that comes in for one inning, two outs, three outs, one inning. Yeah, that's where you that's who should, you should be ripping. That's 17 million a year you just gave. You just set the market by giving Aldis Chapman 17.2 million dollars a year and you're bitching and moaning that Patates, the setup guy wanted 5. Which by the way, let's not forget Chapman was the one that blew the save in game 7 of the World Series. The Cubs had to come back and win that game in extras. And if you use Chapman as the base for the mathematics of what somebody is worth based upon statistics, Batantes would have been worth $23 million last year with his numbers. Yeah, he must have been drinking. Here are some numbers, by the way, because I'm thinking (laughs) he was drunk, honestly. Because here are the numbers for Dylan Batantes since he became a full-time reliever at the major league level, and that was back in 2014. So we're talking, what, three years? Here's the numbers. Of the relievers in Major League Baseball who have made at least 100 appearances, he's made 217, by the way. He's fifth in ERA. He's tied for 10th in whip. And he's first in strikeouts. First in strikeouts. With 392 strikeouts in 217 innings in three years. Third in strikeouts per nine innings, behind only Chapman and Miller. The first in innings, 247. He doesn't have the stats. Are you kidding? Like, what are you drinking? And, like, put it down. 
So Patates comes out, and you know Patates made five hundred and seven thousand dollars last year, five hundred and seven. So you're also paying him for some past service now, and, and to keep him on. The, and you, and they're going to work out a long-term deal, I would assume. Only his first year arbitration. So $3 million is, yes, it's a great payday for his first year of arbitration. But based upon Randy Levine's comments that he's not worth $5 million because he's not a closer and that he didn't have the stats when in reality he's one of the best relievers in the game, I don't care what inning he comes in. Jim Johnson's making $5 million for the Braves. Jim Johnson, he fell off the map three years ago. And you could have given him $3.5 million and avoided it altogether. And avoided all of this. Now, Batantes is like, well, you just made my uh, decision in free agency a hell of a lot easier next year. Like, what are you doing? Oh, what a what a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. I mean, again, Goose Gossage, you're 100 years old. You want to be the old cranky guy? There is no excuse to be the president of the New York Yankees and throw a guy that you just won arbitration on, one of the best cl- relievers in the game, and start throwing things like he's not a reliever. He's not a closer. Like, that makes a damn bit he, of difference. He made Andrew Miller expendable. Uh, it, amazing. Just absolutely amazing to me. 844-640-6464. That's 844-640-6464. All right, we got uh, two hours in the books. I can't believe it. I'm a little shocked right now. I don't it's know like where the time hours, goes. But man. you're right. The, the sun has not come up at all. No, it's not. So it's, it still uh, feels like it's like 645. Yes, it's uh, it's actually quite terrible, uh, the, the look. There's going to be a lot of rain today, a lot of wind, a lot of rain. So please be careful on your commutes today, both to work and on your way home. Join us on uh, Facebook, by the way. The conversation, the TV show, it's all running live. Facebook Live. Come back and join us. Big final hour. We'll get you the latest in the NFL. Some big rumors floating around here, folks. It's starting already. Big rumors. We'll tell you the latest in the gossip world that is the NFL. We'll do that coming up next. Renarian ZMAX, 640, Fox Sports, South Florida.